he's not flashy at anything. He's good at everything, but he's not flashy at everything. You know, where you had Anderson Silva was, you know, like flashy knockouts and everything. Volk seems like he just gets the job done, you know, no matter what the area is. And do you think when he's retired and we're looking back on his career and debating whether it was him or Max Holloway or Jose Aldo as the GOAT of that division, that we'll appreciate him more later than we maybe, maybe he gets now? I think that's usually the case with, with all athletes that, that, that are great during their era. Um, you know, I think I think the same about John Jones. I, I, I don't think John Jones is appreciated the way that he should be appreciated. And definitely Volkanovski is one of those guys. But when you look at our business, you know, Australia and New Zealand are a big part of our business as far as pay-per-view goes. And Volkanovski is definitely a big star. So, um, yeah. I don't, know. I don't know the answer, but yeah. Dana, over here. Yeah. What went into the thought to give Robbie that tribute video? Because we've had fighters like Shogun and Frank Edgar announce their retirement before their fight, and they didn't get the video. Well, I don't think we've ever really confirmed that you know somebody was retiring or whatever. Robbie and I have had several conversations. He, he's done. There's no whatever, and uh, so we did. And you think of another, like obviously Amanda just happened, but to Robbie. And thank God we made that video because uh, we still had 25 minutes left on ABC. So, thank God. Can you, can, I know Amanda just retired and she put like the belts down and that was, seemed to be a perfect ending. But can you think of another, like in MMA history, that a lot of people online seem to think this is the best retirement moment we've had in this sport? Yeah, those are two really good ones. Um, I don't know. I don't know, and the, and the big question was, you know, after that quick knockout, is he really done? Did you guys talk to him already? Yeah. Yeah, he was like at 2 o'clock today, he knew. He felt great, felt better than he's ever felt, and, you know, he was feeling it today, he told me, so. Well, according to Connor's Twitter, Robbie Wall is probably going to fight again by the end of the year. According to Connor's Twitter, Robbie's Connor, Connor tweeted that he's, he thinks Robbie's going to fight again by the end of the year. We've had a lot of conversations leading up to tonight, and then we've talked Three times tonight. Yeah. He won't. Yeah, Robbie said this. Yeah, he um, won't. What did you make of Bo Nichols' performance? It's another quick knock, another quick finish. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's a wrestler. Let's start there. Uh, he fought a kid, real kid, 7 0. Took him on short notice without getting to study him and train for him. And, um, and this kid's got knockout power. And Bo looked damn good tonight. Every time this kid fights, he looks better and better. At what point do you just have to start throwing him into these? Because he's he's had so few fights, but he's putting away these people on that have the same amount of experience as him, but he's putting them away in under a minute. At what point do you just throw him into the top of the team? Throw him into the, he fought a kid tonight that was 7-0. and oh. <laughs> What, were you throwing a guy with 30-0? I mean, uh, you know, when, when you look at the way fights are made in boxing, this kid's already, you know, um, way ahead of the game. He, he even said that he's surprised at how fast. He's gone. Here. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, there's no hurry. He's young. You know, he's only got a few fights. But the reality is, too, I'm trying. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. But when we brought um, Cain Velasquez in, he was like two and zero, three. Yeah, something like that. Maybe, maybe three or four and zero. But so who knows? Um, a couple of unrelated to this fight, but Kamar Usman was in here and he said he still wants to fight Hamzat at 170 pounds. Have you talked to him at all while he was in town? No. I have not talked. What do you do with Islam now? Because Alex said that he might have to have surgery on his arm. Charles did an interview earlier this week at UFCX saying that October might be too soon for him. So looking at that top 15, Gaethje and Poirier obviously fighting in a couple weeks. Who do you give him for Abu Dhabi? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to announce Abu Dhabi real soon. No, no Abu Dhabi stuff because they want to coordinate with us when we do it, but we'll, we'll have the announcement on that card soon. Thank you, yeah. um, Going back to Robbie, he's the final fighter in the UFC who ever fought for Pride and one of like a couple who fought for Strike Force. It's an end of an era in that regard. Um, in hindsight, those purchases that you guys did at those two companies, how valuable have they been to the UFC? Massive. I mean, at the time, when you looked at the number that we paid for Pride at, the, at that time, it was, it was a massive number. Um, but if you look at the fights that we've made, you know, the guys that came over from Pride, all the fights that were made, it's just, it was one of the greatest deals of all time. And, um, Other than buying the UFC for $2 million. Yeah. <laughs> if we had uh, Juliana Pena and Raquel Pennington both here tonight, and they're you know, beating the drum to get that vacant title fight that Amanda left behind, do you guys, have you put any thought towards what you're gonna do with that 35 belt? We're working on some stuff right now, yeah.
And uh, speaking of belts, I spoke to Jorge Masvidal yesterday, and he wanted me to pitch you the idea of he wants to wrap the BMF title around the winner of Poirier and Gaethje. That's would you cool. like? Would you sure. like to do that? It's I can do that. Yeah, Done. Not the Rock this time. Done. Congrats. Right. We did it. Hey, Dana, over here. Yeah. Um, so Alexander Pantoja winning the title, awesome performance. So he gets it. Brandon Royal was the backup for this fight. Yeah. Is he gonna fight the winner? Even well, he grabbed me as soon as I walked out of the octagon. He's like, yeah. "Let me get in there now. I'm, I'm ready. I want this fight. I'll beat both these guys." You know. So he's fired up and wants that fight. Is he gonna get it though? We'll see. Okay, we'll see. And then uh, we talked about Drake. So obviously, we to see how healthy he is. I would assume he's number one to fight. Is he? Would Sean Strickland be number two just with his performance a couple weeks ago? He seems like he's healthy. He wanted to step in there and fight for the title. Well, Strickland put himself in a really good position, man. Like, like I, when I when I did, if you don't know, that week I was saying to the press, win, lose, or draw. Nobody wanted to fight this guy, and Strickland, who's ranked number seven, stepped up to the plate, took this fight, and, and look at what he did. So yeah, uh, he gets a lot of credit for taking and winning that fight, and especially winning the fight the way that he did. Yeah, and last one for me, Canadian got asked, uh, Canada, any yeah. announcements soon for the next date? Vancouver was great, you were, you know, you saw that response there. I agree. Toronto, a possibility, a lot of fighters from Toronto. In the yeah, yeah, N listen, nobody's more excited to get back to Toronto than me, man. I love that city. Um, there's so many things I love about Toronto, so ASAP, we'll be back there as soon as possible. <laughs> Dana, Dana, Dana.